Welcome back to another Pokemon Hardcore Nuzlocke Challenge. We already beat Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green with Lorelei, Bruno and Agatha. And now it's Lance's turn. That's right, Lance the Dragon Master. Dragons are a huge part in fantasy stories and some of the most liked mythical creatures. In Pokemon a dragon does not necessarily have the dragon type and in generation 1 only 3 Pokemon had the glorious typing. Since dragons have on average the highest base stat total of all typings, this should be a very easy run. <laughs> the rules for this run are in the description down below but in short we can only catch the first Pokemon on each route which was in Lance's team. If a Pokemon faints it's considered dead and we can't use it anymore. The battle style is set, we cannot use any items in battle besides Pokeballs. And of course we have a level cap to the next gym leader's ace. The team will be loosely based on the team's lance head in the mainline games, but we won't use the move sets from the games, which might be very hard to implement anyway. Huh? As in previous runs, the starter Pokemon is a signature Pokemon, that means we start with Rattini. Unfortunately that means we don't have access to Charmander in this run, but that's fine. Charizard would be way too strong anyway. The first battle against the rival will be very easy, considering we use a real dragon against a puny little turtle. Okay, that's only a minor setback. I was told the run only really begins after receiving the Pokeballs, so we just continue. In order to receive Pokeballs, we have to enter this Pokemon and get the parcel for Professor Oak, since the delivery service usually gets the delivery a day and a half late. Oak was very happy and gives us the first Pokeballs of the run. Even though we could now catch new Pokemon, there are actually no encounter available until after Brock. Speaking of Brock, here he is. Let's hear what he has to say before we crush him. I'm Brock. My rock hard willpower is evident even in my Pokemon. My Pokemon are all rock hard. <laughs> okay, let's see if they are really as hard as he promises. We only have Rap, which does terrible damage, and Leer to reduce the defense. But Rap is so bad that the damage doesn't work out even after several turns. As you can see, we aren't even close to beat the Geodude. After a long time of Rap and Leer, we lose while Geodude is at about half HP. That's a reset, and we have to hope that it was just bad luck. A few moments later. This time will be easy. It was just a fluke. Nope, we still lose and don't have a chance at all. It looked like Brock didn't overpromise in saying his Pokemon are quite hard to beat. That's what he meant, right? Another reset, another try and we don't have a chance. I think it's not possible to beat him. Okay, I actually don't know how to proceed, but let's beat this rival first. Okay, we lose again. I think this is a true case of skill issue. This guy teaches me how to catch Pokemon, but I can't catch any yet, so it's not an option. Hmm? Teachy TV? What is that? How to battle? That sounds like a good idea. It's up to you to smartly use your Pokemon and their moves to reduce the opponent's HP to nothing and claim victory. I know that, but I can't. Leveling up makes your Pokemon stronger than before. Ah, that makes sense. I have an idea. That's right, we're gonna cheat. I don't see any other way to beat Brock and we increase the level cap by 1. At level 15, Dratini learns Twister, a dragon type move. And in this generation, dragon type attacks are special attacks. Even though Geodudes are pretty hard, they don't have a lot of special defense. Brock is here again and let's see how much Twister does. Oh wow, over half. Well that makes this battle a bit easier I would say. Now comes Onyx, first appearance in this run. Yeah. He gets totally destroyed, Brock is defeated and we can finally move on. Completely fair, he just had to bend the rules a little bit. Shame! 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 Of course we use the correct level caps from now on. At a Pokemon Center right in front of Mount Moon is a very nice guy who has our second teammate for only $500, Magikarp. Even though Lance is the Dragon Master Champion, Gyarados will be the best addition by a mile. But now comes a quite tedious part of the game. Magikarp has to level up to be useful for the next gym and rival battle, but it doesn't have an attacking move. And now Splash doesn't deal any damage. In order to gain tackle, Magikarp has to level up to 15. That's easy, right? Yeah, but we might not be able to switch train all the way up because Retini would overlevel since the level cap is 21. Thankfully, before any of the next major battles are two rare candies. But one is after Mount Moon, 
which might be too hard at that point for Magic Cup to gain any more experience on its own. That means I have to level up until 14 and give it the only rare candy I have in order to learn Tackle. When Magic Cup finally reaches 14, Dratini was already at the start of level 20, which means we had some wiggle room. Back to Viridian Forest to gain all the last experience we need for it to evolve into the almighty and definitely not overpowered Gyarados. This Pokemon evolves any run into a cakewalk, well, there's at least one bad boy who might give us some trouble. I always like to battle the rival first because he opens up more stuff to do, even though the level cap increase would be nice as well. The battle is quite easy, just pressing one button until the rival is down. Pidgeotto was quite sad to see to be honest, but thinking about how often this one trolls the players, this is fine. Rattata has no stats to defend against the Water Snake. Squirtle is here, but it can't do anything as well. And Abra is only a glorified magic card at this point. Rival lost all his Pokemon. And we can move on. Thanks for the experience. Here's a little problem. This camper is in front of the TM for secret power. Very strong in the early game. I'm not sure how much experience his team gives, but I'm absolutely sure that I'm too lazy to look it up. Gyarados has only about 500 experience left, but losing the run for something so stupid, I'll skip it for now and challenge Misty first. Misty is the very annoying water gym leader and her policy is an all-out offensive with water type Pokemon. So we will do the same and start with Gyarados to whoop her ass. Staryu comes first, but doesn't have any relevant moves against us. And Gyarados can't do it, which means recover is used a lot. What was that about all-out offensive? And after Bite finally flinches, Staryu goes down and the last Pokemon is Star Me. Just a bigger Staryu with weakness to Bite. It is only Swift which can deal a bit of damage, but our Water Snake is just too much and Misty is defeated. Now with the increased level cap, we can beat the Camper and get the TM for secret power. Rattata? Useless. Ekans? Not worth talking about. He's already defeated only two Pokemon, which were about 350 in experience points. Maybe I will remember it for the next run. Or reset. On the way to the most American man in the game, I realize I don't have access to Cut, since Gyarados and Rattini can't learn it. So I asked this wannabe gangster Giovanni to help us out and catch a Meowth as our HM slave on the way. Don't worry, it's only for the HM and won't participate in any battle. In order to receive Cut, we have to cut down some loser rival. I guess he doesn't care about his Pokemon at all. Versus Pidgeotto, and as you can see how strong secret power is. Not only does it above half, it also paralyzes. Amazing. Water Onyx basically only uses secret power until the rival can go to the Pokemon Center again. <laughs> Even though Gyarados and secret power is pretty good, it's not good enough for the next gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. That's why Dratini has to solo it. I assume Gyarados might be able to do something if the little worm doesn't survive, but let's hope it doesn't get to the point in the first place. Dratini learned Dragon Rage, which is one of the strongest moves in this part of the game. Voltorb is first and Sonic Boom is really bad. Dragon Rage is not enough. Potion fills the fake Pokeball back up and we hit it low again. Thankfully, Sonic Boom doesn't hit and we beat Voltorb. Now comes Pikachu and let's see if Dragon Rage might be good enough. One hit? Like Pikachu has 40 or less HP? Okay, that's why Fire Red is so easy. Raichu is last and Double Team is the worst move in the entire game. I hate it. Dratini hits anyway and it's not enough. Shockwave deals a lot of damage and of course we miss. We receive a lot of HP back thanks to the Citrus Berry and another Shockwave and we hit for the KO. Surge is done and with that, the most annoying battle before the Elite Four should be done. South of Lavender Town is a little girl with a little story for us. My Pokemon's ashes are stored in Pokemon Tower. You can have this TM. I don't need it anymore. Since her Nuzlocke is already over, she has no use of it until she resets the game. TM Return will play a huge part in my run. Unfortunately, now comes the unethical part. I need to use all my money and gamble it away for a little chance to. On second thought, I just buy the coins. Barely works out, but with the Versus Seeker, it would have been possible to gain the Poker Dollars. Our next teammate is here for sale. With that, I now have three Pokemon in the team. I don't want to battle Erika, just stealing the badge and... Oh, she woke up. That plan didn't work out and we have to battle for the badge. 
First secret power by stun spawn misses. Now I bite, and of course the grass type flinches as well. Perfect. Just another secret power? Oh no, it's not enough. And stun spawn hits? At least cherry berry hits a lot. Erika sheets with some healing items and Gyarados hits it low with secret power. I realized then that Dragon Rage might possibly deal more damage, but it does not. Victory Bell misses and that's it for the grass type. Another move and it's done. Tangela is next, but what can it do? Poison Powder misses and that's the end of it. Vileplume is last and we are still at full HP. Dragon Rage hits into the yellow, very good. Of course it misses. Another Dragon Rage easily finishes it. What? 1 HP left? It really has exactly 81 HP? Never lucky. I assume another healing item, but Erika doesn't want to use one and we beat the plant to receive the badge. Some people might call this battle very lucky, and to that I say, player diff. Down in the basement is Giovanni, and I need to say something very controversial. Giovanni is bad. Onyx is bad. Rhyhorn is bad. And Kangaskhan? Nah, it's fine. Giovanni is playing Mafia Boss, but he is not good at it. At the Pokemon Tower is the rival again. I bet he had to go here after Gyarados destroyed his team last time. But his team mostly doesn't change, so he might have a farm with many duplicates. Anyway, Pidgeotto is just a bit annoying, but we have Dratini with Shockwave to beat it through a sand attack. Growlithe is next, and of course Dragon Rage misses thanks to the previous sand attacks. I switch it out to Gyarados and even though Burn is annoying, it should be fine. Growlithe is down and Execute is next. Buy the special in this generation, which helps a lot. Of course it survives and sets up a reflect that in addition to the burn status means Gyarados doesn't deal any damage anymore. Kadabra comes out to play, but I just used the bite button and it is enough. I thought if DX just barely survived the bite, it should be enough for the stage illusionist. Last war turtle and that's enough for water onyx. My other Dratini should handle that relatively easy with Dragon Rage. The rival is defeated and not to be my cop, but he is already here to bury his team. Again. Finally, the way is free to the Safari Zone. Here I can finally get all three blue eyes of white dragons, I mean all three Dratini together, and there's nothing left to stop me. Here it is. Look how easy it will be, just one ball and... Only one more teammate to get, but before we can get to it, Dratini wants to evolve. Since the last stage is a very high level, we have to make do with Dragonair for now. And Dratini wants to evolve? Huh? Deja vu? I was actually in the middle of an experience and special attack grind when I realized that I have another encounter open. For this, I had to travel back to Vermilion City. Need to use the Super Rod and, wow, first try. Yes, I take it. Cedra and Kingra were part of Lance's team in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, as well as a post-game team of Fire Red and Leaf Green, so it's fair game. Speaking of fair games, the next opponent on our list is Koga. I think every single teammate could beat him on its own, but keep in mind the level cap stays the same after this battle, which means I have not leveled up to the cap. First is coughing, and Gyarados uses return for not enough. Getting poison is annoying, that's why the correct berry was equipped. Two additional turns are used to beat the poison type. Buck is the hardest Pokemon to beat because of, yes, mini mice. But Gyarados is like, nah, it hits every single time. Mug is down and we are happy. Next coughing and a critical hit return easily removes it from the field. Last is wheezing and this is so bad. Return does below half while wheezing misses. A bite put it into range and smoke screen is used. Another return should be enough and it's not enough. That's bad, the poison makes it even worse. Of course, hyper potion is used and we missed the first time. Is it unfair to miss here? Was it fair because of the turns before? I don't know. Switching into Dragonair, but Sludge deals too much damage. Twister's used and... Ooh, that's kind of small. Yikes. Sludge is used again and switching is the next play. Another Sludge puts it low and we have to try it. There's no other way. Twister and... Flinch, very good, let's try again. Twister and... Crit! That is way to go. Toxic doesn't matter anymore and just to serve to end the battle. That was way too stressful and could have ended very badly. Anyway, Koga is defeated and that is very important for the next step. 
and Pewter City is a museum, but I don't care for history and stuff. On the east side is a small entrance to find some nerds. One of them has a nice fossil for us to take. I wonder what it could be. Thanks to Koga's badge and the HM for Surf, I can travel to Cinnabar Island. And here's a laboratory, which helps reviving the fossil into Aeroductule. The team is finally complete. It's funny that this is basically the rematch team for Fyred, which obviously means I planned it right from the beginning, right? Right? With Aeroductile and the TM for Thief, it's possible to get some power-up items. What is the Hard Rock from the Rock Hard Onyx in Hard Rock Tunnel? It boosts Rock-type attacks, hard. Or hardly? Where the future city is a small grass patch in which wild Feroz roam freely. And in search for Feroz to steal from, we find a weird looking Spiro. And since we are human, we catch it and send our shiny new friend to a zoo for weird looking animals, where it sits all alone in a cage to be gawked at. With little food and very miserable until the day it. After a while, the Fero arrives to give us his sharp beak. I actually wonder what this exactly means. How can it give us a sharp beak? Let's not think about it too much. This item boosts flying type attacks, but as it turns out, I didn't really need it for this run. Yeah, too bad. With all this preparation, I can move to the top of Self Co. And the rival wants to battle once again. I find it very fascinating that he has more Pokemon after I already sent multiple of them to the Pokemon Tower, but it is what it is. Pidgeot is the first one who has to go, but with the new team member with ancient power and an equipped hard rock, it was no problem at all. Blastoise is too dangerous, but we have learned from Misty to go all out with bothered Pokemon and Gyarados comes into play and beats Blastoise after a long time will return against many protects. Next Growlithe and Gyarados is already good enough, but Aerodactyl could get a boost with engine power and is strong enough to beat the team on its own. Engine power hits and KOs, but no boost. Execute is next, but wing attack is too strong against it. Last is Alakazam, but it has no defense and is down after a single move as well. The rival is defeated and should honestly just reset the challenge, but I have a feeling he will come back. Giovanni is still here, but let's be honest, Giovanni is bad. Nidorino is bad. Nidoqueen is bad. Kangaskhan? That's fine. I had to switch as well. There was the last Pokemon, but I don't remember it anymore. Must have been bad as well. That is the Silvco arc done. As a thanks for rescuing the company, I received the Master Ball, which is completely useless at that point. A little fun fact, the last Julia has two Clefairy. Each gives two HP AVs. I did the Eins from Overlord, complete Nazarek Nightmare stuff. Destroy these two and resurrect them right after with the store item Versus Seeker to grind the AVs. <laughs> HP is the most valuable stat in my opinion, since Fire Red and Leaf Green are quite easy to play through, especially with the Lance Gang. After having a little bit of fun, I move on to the next gym leader, which is the Psychic Sabrina. But Aerodactyl with Hard Rock equipped should have a very easy time. Kadabra is first, but Engine Power, and it's gone. The boost is very nice, but maybe not necessary. Mr. Vime is next, and yeah, didn't stand a chance at all. Now comes Venomoth, and Engine Power is super effective. That's it for the moth. Last is Alakazam, but let's be honest, it never stood a chance. This badge was very easy to gain. Thank you for your sacrifice. The next gym leader is a real psycho. I don't know if it ever occurred to you, but in order to enter the gym, you need a secret key, which is hidden inside the Pokemon Mansion. But what about the trainers inside the gym? Can they even leave? Are they even real? Imagine waiting until the rescue comes and it's me, the guy who will destroy them for experience, one by one. As you can imagine, the battle is relatively free. I have a Seedra, which is a water type, with Surf, which is a water special attack. And Seedra was trained inside Pokemon Tower against the Ghastly until the special attack wasn't able to grow anymore. Yeah, Blaine never stood a chance. And I wasn't even at the level cap, since I knew it would be so easy. Only one more batch to go. I nearly forgot that this is the joke of the game, Giovanni. You can imagine how it will go. Giovanni is bad. Rhyhorn is bad. Dark Trio is bad. Nidoqueen is bad, well actually. Nidoking is bad. No, that's not correct either. Rhyhorn is bad. That's it for the gym leader. They never stood a chance. Besides Brock, the strongest of them all. The rival waits for me. And I level up to only 53, the level of his ace. I don't know what his strategy is, but it seems to be just throw stuff at me and hope that something sticks. Doesn't work, but let's see. Pidgeot against Aerodactyl doesn't look too good, a single engine power with Hard Rock is easily enough. No boost, but it wouldn't stand a chance against Blastoise anyway. Switching into Gyarados and that will be very unfair. 
Blastoise doesn't have a single useful move against the Water Onyx, while it has Dragon Dance to set up fully and wipe the team from then on. It's a bit funny that after all these dances, Return still didn't one hit, but it's fine. Blastoise set up Rain for some reason and I plan to use it to the fullest. Surf against Rhyhorn would have been enough anyway. Whirlif comes next and Rain stops, oh well. Surf is still enough to beat the dog. Execute wants some action and return destroyed it easily. Last is Alakazam, it saw all his friends going down one by one. And now it's time for it as well. Return hits and the rival is defeated again. This wasn't even a real roadblock to be honest. But what can I say? Lance Gang did what Lance Gang does best. There's only one thing left to do and that's beating the Elite Four. But before that, Dragonair evolves into blue eyes, white Dragonite. And the other Dragonair evolves as well. Funny enough, I forgot that Outrage would not be possible to gain after beating the game this way. So I delayed the second Dragonair's evolution for some levels to gain it. Realized it after the first Dragonite, but it's fine. Everything we can do for the Elite Four is done. And we can face Lorelei, the Master of Ice, my worst matchup. The only out I have is Gyarados. Dugong comes first and we have to tank some ice beams while the fake water dragon sets up some dragon dances. After two it's enough to start. Return hits and it is enough to beat Dugong. Cloyster is next. This takes a while thanks to Protect and the high defense stand, but after a while even this one doesn't stand a chance and goes down. Slowball comes and goes after a single return as expected. Jinx doesn't have the defense stat to survive and goes down after a single return as well. Last is Lapras and Gyarados goes to Lance Root and uses Hyper Beam, which misses. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Let's try again and use Hyper Beam. Hits and Lapras is down. That's the first Elite Four member done. Next on the list is Bruno and I don't think it will be any problem. This might be the perfect battle for Cedra. Onyx is first, but what can it do against Surf? Nothing. Just losing. Hit one chance next and Surf will surely be enough. Oh, it's not? Rock Tomb is very annoying. The Water Dragon has to tank a big hit and then hit with another Surf to beat one of the hit ones. The other one is here and Brick Break does a lot of damage. But Surf is not enough to beat Hitman Lee. Mega Kick? Ah, uh, not even close. And Surf KOs. Now comes Machamp and Cedra did enough. Trading places with Gyarados. Intimidate and not very effective. What can Cross Shop do? That's quite big. Impressive. Return might deal a lot of damage and it puts Machamp into the yellow. Scary face is very annoying, but probably the best move for Gyarados. Cedros Berry gives some HP back. Now I get very greedy and of course get punished heavily. The champ uses bulk up to boost its defense, as if he knew what's going on, and Gyarados uses Hyper Beam, but Machamp survives. Gyarados has to recharge, and Bruno uses a Hyper Potion. So that worked out fine. It's fine, everything is in control now. I switch into Dragon Knight and see another bulk up, which means that physical attacks are now too weak to use, and Surf does a lot of damage. That's the perfect time to use Outrage since it will KO Machamp, and even though Dragonite is locked into Outrage, the last Onyx does not have good special defense, KOs it in one hit. Bruno is defeated, unfortunately not via Hyper Beam, but it happens. Agatha is next, the most annoying battle in this game, but I already prepared with Aerodactyl and the Rock Hard Hard Rock. First is Gengar, as usual, and here comes Ancient Power. It doesn't KO, but the boost is activated. This battle is over as long as nothing crazy happens. Double team is bad, and the flying rock dragon misses of course. Little side note, I always forget that Aerial Ace is obtainable on Road 9, so double team is technically not an issue. My bad. You are made of stupid. Next turn wing attack hits, and the first Gengar is down. Arbok is next, and the attack boost is gone. Engine power hits and does a lot of damage, but Iron Tail puts Aerodactyl into the yellow. Another engine power KOs, and of course another boost is activated. Agatha must be so mad right now. Go over to see her, but what can it really do? Another engine power with plus one attack and hard rock is enough to beat it in one hit. Now comes Haunter and we can just use the last engine power to KO it. Another boost? That three from five? That's amazing. What are the odds? Last is Gengar, but we don't need to talk about that one. Wing attack blasted from the battlefield with ease. 
Agatha is done, and the worst thing that happened was that I haven't used Hyper Beam here. Tragic. No comes the imposter of the run. A fake. An impersonator. A pretender. A fraud. Let's say it's a hoodwinker. We start with our blue-eyed white dragon knight against the water onyx. Hawkwave is still here for the specific matchup and Gyarados is down. Dragonair is next, but Lance Copy didn't see Outrage coming, which one-shots Dragonair. And the next Dragonair as well. Lance's Dragonite is here, and of course, only two turn Outrage. It was planned, kinda, and Personberry comes to the rescue. But let's be honest, Outrage is the best move here, and it also nearly KO'd the Dragonite. It used Safeguard. What was that again? Ah, oh, okay. It does nothing. Silithberry costs some HP, but it's over. Another hit, and Lance's Ace is defeated. Only Aerodactyl left, but what can it really do? It has to use engine power and take the boosts while Outrage doesn't deal enough damage anymore, right? Wait, no, that was only a joke. Let's switch out into Gyarados. Wait, no, not Gyarados. Mistake number one, don't switch into a Pokemon, which has a weakness against the move most likely being used. Engine power is used again and does nearly half HP. Okay, don't worry, we got this. Surf hits and doesn't care, oh no. Gyarados barely survives. Let's use another Surf. Mistake number two, don't use an obviously weak move in a free turn. Ooh, not even half. I'm now in the menu and look for an answer, because this is really bad. Gyarados is still needed for the last battle. My idea was to either have a way to safely win, or make a sacrifice, which allows me to still win the Nuzlocke. And then I realized that the answer is pretty obvious. Twitching into Cedra easily tanking the engine power, and even get the poison point activated. All that's left to do is survive the wing attack and hit back with Surf to win the battle. That was a little bit closer than I imagined it to be. No comes the final battle of the run. The rival went back to his farm to receive new copies of his team in order to beat the Nuzlocke. The strategy is pretty obvious. We start with one of our Dragonites against Pidgeot. This Dragonite has Thunderbolt and should easily beat the bird in one. Oh, it's not enough? That's not good. Actually, it's very good. Full restore will be wasted early on and two more Thunderbolts finishes Pidgeot off. The rival assumes Rhydon is pretty good here, but it is not. Staff is really good though, and another Pokemon is easily defeated. Since I am at a huge advantage, I want to clone a bit and use Hyper Beam against Alakazam. Unfortunately, a Psychic was used and a special defense drop occurred, but it doesn't matter since Alakazam is no more. Executor is next, and this is so funny. Cedrus Berry restores some HP and Egg Bomb misses, which made Hyper Beam completely free. Dragon Claw hits for over half, but Sleep Powder is annoying. Testing one turn, but Dragon Knight stews through it even though an Egg Bomb detonates right in its face. Time to switch into Aerodactyl. Egg Bomb doesn't deal enough damage and a casual wing attack removes the grass type from the game. Of course Blastoise the show's next makes perfectly sense, but Aerodactyl's job is done and switches places with Gyarados. Hydro Pump hits but doesn't matter. Return is used and puts it right above half. Another return puts Blastoise in the danger zone, but Citrus Berry returns some HP. You know what this means. Gyarados uses Hyper Beam to destroy Blastoise, but we took so much damage and now the recharge turn, it's time to say goodbye to Gyarados. Because Arcanine is now here to end this glorious... What? It doesn't even KO Gyarados? Wow, I didn't expect that to be honest. Let's switch Gyarados out for Dragonite, tanking an easy extreme speed. Another extreme speed to put a little dent into Dragonite's HP. Surf hits and Arcanine is nearly defeated. I get greedy again and run into the full restore turn using Hyper Beam, which does not KO Arcanine. Of course, it needs to recharge a turn now, but why stop here? Dragonite uses another one to end the Nuzlocke on a high note. The rival is defeated, Lance style. We didn't lose a single Pokemon, but it's Lance's team, so of course not. You know the drill, please subscribe for more hardcore Nuzlocke's in the future. If you have a suggestion, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and I see you next time.